Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, as part of our special week of shows from the Sundance Film Festival, you'll meet some brilliant young minds set to change the world. Their stories are part of a new documentary, Science Fair. And I'm Malika Bilal, live from Park City, Utah, with the film's directors. Now, the documentary follows several students from around the world on their quest to win the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Take a look. The winner in the category of Medicine and Health Sciences, Jeff Thomas Those youngsters you just saw are real scientists. At today's science fairs, teens are making stethoscopes powered by artificial intelligence and researching cures for the Zika virus. The documentary Science Fair showcases these remarkable students and their endeavors at a time when scientific fact is being challenged around the globe. The film also raises the question of how to nurture young people with extraordinary talents. Joining us to talk about this, in Brookings, South Dakota, Kashfia Rahman. She's one of the young scientists featured in the film. Also in the documentary in Santa Clara, California, Robbie Barrett. Here with me in Park City are the film's directors, Christina Costantini and Darren Foster. Welcome to the stream, both of you. Thank I you. I am geeking out already about this, about this show because I love the film and I and I, I love science clearly. So I know the same is true for you all. Christina, you've called this a love letter to the world of science. How so? Um, so I was a science fair kid um, when I was in high school. I went to the International Science and Engineering Fair two years. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And it totally changed my life. Uh, it validated, you know, the interests that I had. It gave me confidence. It, like, rewarded intelligence and all kinds of, you know, it was an incredible experience. So I wanted to show what an amazing place it was. It's also a really fun, funny place because it's full of teenagers and mm -hmm. so inherently Apparently it's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, we set out to, to make this little celebration of the science fair world. And Darren, what drew you to the film? Christina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Christina told me the stories of her time at ICEF and uh, you know, some of the anecdotes she, she told me just made me really excited about the film. Uh, and then we had a chance to scout um, ICEF in 2016 in Phoenix and it blew my mind just, you know, 1700 kids from around the world uh that are just celebrated like like rock stars for mm -hmm. you know for doing science yeah. um at a really impressive level uh and we got to meet some really amazing kids including robbie and kashfia who we met on that first trip and uh we stuck with them all the way till sundance which is crazy <laughs> that's but, amazing for me yeah. so kashfia and robbie i'm just thinking what is your secret sauce that made you a few of the competitors that ended up in the science fair documentary, Casfia. Why do you think Christina and Darren picked you? I think that um, my journey to the Intel International Science Fair is a really unconventional one because I come from a pretty small community that doesn't really uh, promote science fair. So I think that um, Darren and Christina thought that um, having my perspective um, in the documentary would bring a really unique flair to the to the science fair um, world. Robbie. Yeah, so, um, I mean, kind of the same thing. Like, I came from a really small town in West Virginia. And, um, I mean, the first year that I was at the science fair, uh, I met Christina and Darren, and I don't know, it was, it was really fun. I tried to be a little bit funny. And, um... <laughs> I, Ro Robbie, I, I think you succeeded. I, I want to show a little clip from science fair. This is the kind of thing that Robbie does. It's quite endearing. Or depending, it might be quite annoying, depending if you're his math teacher or his parents. Have a look. He programmed his calculator to generate uh, Shakespearean insults. <laughs> yep. And uh, every time you would, t you would punch a button, it would generate another insult. What are Shakespearean oh. insults like? Oh, well, I remember one that was um, something like, thou art an unwashed puttock. It would say things like that. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was ingenious. Okay, yeah, so, so this is one of the calculators that I was modding. I got this one to like broadcast like 16-bit music to FM radios. I mean, I learned a lot doing this. 
I mean, I don't get it. Like, you know, my math teacher, she hated me for it. If I were a math teacher, I'd like, you know, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'd congratulate the kid. So you're, you're, doing, you're doing good things. Everybody's smiling here. Robbie, seeing yourself on camera, what is that like? What, modding your calculator? No, seeing yourself <laughs> on camera. <laughs> He's got a one-track science brain here. It's really weird. Um, I mean, I experienced it for the first time um, at Sundance, pretty much. And it was just, it was just really strange, like, hearing your own voice. Because it, it doesn't sound the same than, than what you're speaking, you know? So I want to bring up uh, this tweet here from Jack, and some of you may know him because, of course, uh, for those of you on this show, he was in the film. He is uh, a previous winner in ISAF, a participant, a previous ISAF participant and winner. Um, and so this is what he tweeted into the show. Jack says, there are many setbacks as you work through your scientific experiment. There's lots of long days and nights, more learning. You really have to believe in and love your work. So he's talking about some of the challenges um, that some of the students face. And while I want to hear more about those, Christina and Darren, and I'm also interested in the challenges you all faced as <laughs> filmmakers because your background is investigative work. It's not so much human interest, students, exactly. kids. So talk about some of those obstacles. Uh, so we thought this was going to be so easy because what we're used to is investigative reporting. Um, but it was a, quite a challenging piece. We ended up, um, we got five press passes to the International Science Fair and we were trying to chase around a dozen kids. And so, you know, very long hours. It was a ton of fun, but uh, yeah, it was definitely not an easy production. Yeah, trying to keep track of 12 teenagers in downtown Los Angeles for a week is not the easiest thing. Uh, it was a bit like, we, 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 we'd say it was a bit like Nightcrawler, but instead of uh, changing to the scenes of uh, crime scenes and, and car accidents, we were chasing uh, teenage drama all around. Uh, but it was, it was so much fun. I mean, we were just feeding off the energy of these kids. They were so excited to be there. We were so excited to be there, and we were very invested in them at this, by this point. So, you know, we just really were just excited to document their, their journey there. It was mm -hmm. amazing. And Teddy, as promised, I, I want to get one of the students' reactions to this tweet about the setbacks. Because mm -hmm. it, it, the film doesn't make it look easy. It, it shows that it is difficult. But uh, Kashvi, I'm wondering for you, what was the biggest difficulty? Probably the biggest challenge um, throughout the whole science fair process was um, finding like that adult to kind of uh, help uh, guide me through all the paperwork and all the complicated process uh, processes that were required to um, have a project to present at the International Science Fair because um, Science Fair isn't uh, recognized or sponsored by my high school, so it was really hard kind of finding that mentor figure to um, help me with this with the journey. Tell us about the mentor you did find, because he's quite an unusual person. Exactly. Um, so my mentor was uh, Coach Lee Schmidt, who's actually the football coach at our high school. <laughs> our high school's really big into athletics and sports. So it was a really unconventional partnership, but it worked out really well because uh, Coach Schmidt is such a supportive and um, uh, admirable figure. He he helped um, in any possible way he could, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was amazing what he did for me. So... Did he? And what we don't um, get to, uh, sorry, what yeah, we yeah, don't get to in the film is that uh, Coach Schmidt is also the head of the Feminist Club and the head of the awesome. World Religions Club. <laughs> That's very cool. And I just, I have always wanted to give him a shout out for that because it mm -hmm. never made it to the film, but he's a really amazing guy. <laughs> did he understand the science that you were doing? Did he understand your project? Um, I, I explained my project to him a couple uh -huh. times, and he didn't quite understand all of the technical aspects of it, but I think he had a pretty good grasp of what I was doing, and he um, always praised me for, you know, uh, raising a public health concern, which was a big part of what my project was. But um, So although he didn't understand all of the science um, yeah. behind my project, he definitely um, understood it well enough to be that figure, that guiding figure. So let's have a little look at Kashfia's project. Our school has a pretty bad drug and alcohol problem because in Brookings there's not much to do. I definitely wanted to, you know, explore more about like the underlying risky behavior phenomenon. No, it'll fit. I mean, it fit my dad's head, so it'll fit yours. <laughs> my project basically focuses on how um, repeated acts of risky behaviors affects emotions and cognitive functions in adolescents. This is what your brain was looking like while you were doing that. It's pretty cool, right? 
So basically, the negative emotions that are usually associated with um, risk-taking, like guilt and fear and stress, gradually become, you know, desensitized and muted with the repeated um, exposures to uh, different risky environments. I love that explanation, even though I don't know if I necessarily understand all of it. But you see the struggle that Kashmir had to go through to find a sponsor. And then also in the film, you have people like Dr. Serena uh, McCullough. Uh, we had a video comment she sent us because she couldn't be on this show. But you can kind of see the care and the expertise she puts into each of her students. This is what she talked to about how to go about doing that. This is, this is what she said. The greatest support I would give to science education is to identify university partnerships with high school level students. I believe that currently we provide foundational mathematics and science to all students, but we sometimes forget about the exceptional students and it would benefit them all to have someone there to support them in the fields that may not be well understood by high school teachers. So she talks about there her uh, ideas for how to support gifted students. But the broader picture is she's someone who is one of those people. Um, and you don't always find that. Talk about that juxtaposition in schools where that's there and ready for students and others where it's not so much. Yeah, you know, uh, Darren and I really wanted to share uh, the diversity of the science fair and, and these really well-resourced schools that are super supportive. Dr. McCullough has one of the best, or she has the best science fair team in the world. Uh -huh. um, and she, uh, you know, spends all of her hours on this. Mm -hmm. She goes home and reads uh, research journals on the topics that her students are learning about. Um, she doesn't get any sleep. She's one of the hardest working people I know. Mm -hmm. um, and her students... Uh, their work reflects that and they are doing incredible amazing things and so you know when we see when when we look at uh, Kashfi and Robbie they're on the other end of the spectrum so we wanted to show kind of the kids that need more support and the kids who have an amazing support system mm -hmm. yeah I mean Dr. McCullough runs you know her research team at Jericho High School in New York you know like many schools run their football programs oh. you know she's very much a coach and she you know they spend time after school um and many hours after school uh working on their research projects um and i think if more schools were mm. to dedicate their time like they do to you know this their sports programs and stuff like that to mm. stem education or even the arts you know um you'd have different results and you'd have you know people uh like kashfi and Robbie who you know don't get that kind of support uh better supported Mm -hmm. Darren and Christina, when I first saw uh, Dr. McCullough on the film, I looked at her and I thought, that teacher, she is intense. I don't think I'm exaggerating. Have a look. Here's, she is in action in Science Fair. What is this section of text about? Is this a definition? I'm going to be so proud when one of my kids win a Nobel Prize, because they will. One of them will. Why can't you explain why understanding the chromatic number is important instead of defining it? Dr. McCullough is a very hardworking teacher. Sometimes she works even harder than her students. No, oh, can you just... focus, please? <laughs> Give me the header. She is strict. She can be s scary. But um, I actually like her style. It reminds me of my, my life in China, because the teachers are usually really strict. Robbie, I, I see. Uh... Dr. McCullough there, and then I think about your math teacher, Mrs. Myers. Um, how, how do those two compare? Uh, total opposites. I mean, uh, Miss Myers, like, I feel like in a way, she was like almost actively discouraging. And, you know? Um, yeah, T tell us more. For instance, you, you, would, you would make your calculator do Shakespearean insults, and she would say what? Well, I mean, I mean she, she'd take away my calculator, uh, reset it, whatever, but, um, I mean, I, I feel like I feel like that's like a good thing, you know. I, that's sort of how I started to learn how to program. Mm. Um, so I mean, even though I'd have been a little bit annoying to to the math teacher, I feel like you know there's probably better ways that that, that you could have responded to a kid programming their calculator. Teachers will be Teacher. watching this now. Educators will be watching this now, and they will have youngsters in their class who are like you, who are innovative, not doing their homework, but obviously mm -hmm. understand the mathematics or whatever subject it is that they're doing. They're just maybe not just throwing in their homework. What would you say to those educators? Uh, well, I mean, 
the reason that I wasn't really doing a lot of my homework is because I was really busy running different stuff. Like I started my school's programming club. I was like working on teaching that. I was mentoring the um, my middle school's robotics club that I started when I was in middle school. Uh, I'd go back and mentor them. Um, I just had a lot of stuff that I was working on that was that was really interesting to me. It's a lot yeah. more interesting than you know the homework that they give for math class because, I mean, the homework that I got from Miss Myers was just like just like drills almost. It's just like take these numbers, plug it into this equation, and just you know calculate. It was just like calculation, and that's that's really not what math's about. There there was no room for creativity or anything. All right, you've got some support from live on YouTube. Let me just show you this before I go to Malika. If this kid can code a calculator, he can code a computer. Someone send him to Silicon Valley. I will pay for it. We are saving that comment and tracking him down. Malika, go ahead. So I wanted to bring up uh, two comments uh, on the same theme. The first one is from Anjali, and Anjali is also in the film and was also a participant in, uh, in the science fair. She writes, high schoolers truly need the support of classroom teachers to push for involvement in extracurriculars like research. Research grants and internship opportunities are so few, but give exposure to real institutions. She says they need funding. So that's one person's view, uh, and she's a student, so she knows what she's talking about. This is a teacher, she's a science teacher. This is Jen Gutierrez, and she writes in, in a nation driven by test scores, it can be challenging to convince teachers that authentic STEM, that's science uh, and math, teaching and learning works. Students are always excited when the learning is real, relevant, and connected to them. So we need to keep creating those teachable moments. So some of the things that students and, and schools in this country are up against funding, uh, teachers who are um, teaching to the test because that is what the school system expects of them. Talk about some of those challenges. Are those things that you ran into in the filming of this? Yeah, I think, you know, certainly in, in, in Robbie's case, you know, here's a, obviously a, a brilliant kid uh, who is very good at taking on independent projects. He's very committed to the things that he's interested in, um, but he can't find the support in an education system that teaches to the test. Um, and so, you know, I'm a little more sympathetic maybe to Mrs. Myers from in that from that standpoint that, you know, she's got a job to do, which is to keep the kids, uh, you know, doing well on these state exams or national exams. Um, so, you know, they are between a rock and a hard place. But certainly, I think we have to be more imaginative when it comes to kids like Robbie um, and basically encourage these interests because, you know, Robbie is is an incredible mind. Um, you know, there's that old Apple lad, think different. Robbie thinks different. And like he is like one of those kids that is just going to push the envelope and really make big changes in this world. I want to share something to you with you from Cash Fia's Twitter feed. It's a little mention here from Harvard University in the class of 2022. Uh, where were you going to university, Cash Fia? So um, I recently committed to the Harvard University class of 2022, uh -huh. and I hope that um, uh, in college I'll... Yeah. Oh, there's, there's applause from Park City. Do you hear yeah. it? There's applause. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Do you, yeah. do you think science fair is the reason why you're going to Harvard? I definitely think that my participation and success um, at, at ISEF uh, contributed to my acceptance to Harvard. I feel like um, uh, top colleges like Harvard really seek a unique student body, and um, I feel that um, participating in ISEF really um, kind of set me apart from a lot of uh, other kids my age. Misty Knight says live on YouTube, watching you, Robbie and Kashfir. Robbie, this is for you. What scientific breakthrough are you working on? In order to change the world, you have to have some kind of scientific breakthrough that you're dedicated to. What's your current work? Um, so it might not be a, a real scientific breakthrough, but mm -hmm. right now I'm working a lot on, um, on generative art. So getting, trying to get artificial intelligence to create artwork. Um, and I mean, I know that that's not really like I guess it might not like change the world, but art I'm working does, on all oh, that. Oh, I don't know. Art, art can change the world. Do you have some? Do you want to show us? Show us and tell? Yes. Yeah. So I ahead. don't know if my camera is going to be good enough, but um, I have this print okay. that I did. And I actually, uh, what I did was for that one, it's not AI, but I hooked some medical electrodes, like the stuff that doctors put on your chest to like see the electricity in your heartbeat. I hooked this up to a house plant, and I used that as random noise, sort of, in, in this plot. So mm -hmm. it used like the energy that was bouncing around in the plant. Wow. 
I, that's I, incredible. I, yes, exactly. incredible. I love that. Okay, so I want to uh, share one more comment from someone else who thinks different and uh, differently. And and Robbie, you might relate because he also wasn't really that interested in his classwork. This is Adria, and this is what he told the stream. The fun part of being a rook was that I didn't know what to expect about the firm, and the truth is that the experience was far beyond any possible thoughts. In ISEF, I met a lot of teenagers that, like me, used to think outside the box and prefer to do research projects instead of attending course lectures. So it was a life-changing uh, experience. Then, after I said I had two ambitions. The first one was to become science fair director, and the second one was to start a PhD after my studies. And I'm glad to say that I accomplished both. So he attended the uh, International Science Fair in 2012. He talks about what happens afterwards. So for you all, what happens after this film? What do you want people's takeaway to be? Um, you know, for us, I think the most important thing is that uh, a lot of people see it. That's what we hope. <laughs> we hope that people will see it, people will make people laugh, um, it, and it, most of all, it will inspire people to either compete in science fairs or hopefully change the way they think about the importance of these kinds of independent research competitions. Um, it was the way that I learned the best in high school and, and for there to be more of them would be amazing. Um, Oklahoma just announced that they're cutting their state science fair. So, you know, I think uh, now more than ever, we need to remind people that scientists really matter in this country and, and uh, you know, teenagers are our next generation of scientists. Mm -hmm. I have to share, oh, go on, go ahead, Darren. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, I think yeah. that, uh, you know, a lot of the kids that are featured in this film play against the stereotypes of what a science kit fair kid is. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, if they're nerds, they are nerds in the best possible uh, sense of that word. Um, these kids are a lot of fun. They're very creative. Um, and this film is a lot of fun. And it really just showcases mm. uh, the, how much fun this journey is. It's intense. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But they really do have a good time along the way. Mm. I have to show you this image of Jack here. Jack is a is a gif <laughs> and he's right at the beginning of the, of the film uh, it's not it's not a spoiler really because he's in all of the trailers this is how excited he is to win ICEF the International Science and Engineering Fair and then he's a little bit older here and he tweets out you can think of this as the Olympics of science fair winning will change your life in ways you can't even comprehend I'm wondering Robbie are you there yet <laughs> um Work in progress. Right. Cash for you. <laughs> Has your life changed yet? Or was it too close to science fair for you to say it's different? I, I think my life has definitely changed as a result of science fair. Um, just just like uh, accomplishing um, anything at ISEF gives you that validation and confidence that what you're doing matters. And it kind of gives you the push forward to, you know, keep continuing what you're passionate about, regardless of what others around you are doing or saying to discourage you. I would love top tips from you, Robbie and Kashfir, for other youngsters who are watching this, who have a presentation to do or putting together their board. Always do what, Kashfir? What would you tell them? Um, I think always kind of, uh, this is kind of, it's going to sound kind of cliche, but always speak from your heart because I know a lot of kids, like they rehearse their presentations and become kind of robotic. But I think if you uh, uh, kind of put everything in your own words and speak very clearly and naturally that you'll really get your point across to the judges as best as you can. Mm. Robbie. Uh, I definitely say put together your board before you get to fair because in 2016, <laughs> I actually... I, I had this huge cardboard, it was just blank, and I mailed it out to Science Fair. Yeah. And then yeah. when I got there, I started taping everything on because I wasn't fully done my project yet. So I'd say, um, <laughs> do, it, do it before you get to fair. This and is also... good advice for life, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give one last piece of advice. This is from Jack, who you've heard th uh, from a lot throughout this show, but he had some really great tweets. So Jack says, read widely, think deeply, work hard, listen to your mentor, believe in your idea, learn to present your ideas. I couldn't even get my name out of my mouth at the start. And then you have a chance to go to the fair. All right. Thank you so much to Christina and Darren and Kashfir and to Robbie as well. Uh, my IQ has gone higher just by talking to you. Appreciate it. At the Sundance Institute, go online, look for Science Fair, and you will find out all about this amazing documentary. Thank you very much. We'll see you online. Hashtag AJStream. Take care.